All right. Thank you. Recording in progress. What's up, everybody? Uh, so we're going to do three things uh, on today's session. Very similar for future sessions. Jan dropped the link in. Uh, register, come hang out with us. We're going to do a bunch of these over the next couple of weeks. Um, but we're going to go through three main things today. So first up, we want to talk about what is Operations Hub. Uh, and we'll talk about the difference between the starter and the pro product and some of like how it fits into HubSpot overall. Um, we're also going to do some workshop and give you guys some live marketing use cases uh, that we've been building with some of our customers um, and some things that we've seen add a lot of value. And, and Sarah's here to give us sort of her perspective as an end user and the marketing ops folks and the people that we usually end up working with uh, on how it impacts uh, what she's able to do uh, in her role and how it impacts sort of other marketers, which I'm assuming fills some of this audience as well. Um, and then at the tail end, we're really looking to take questions so we can talk through how to build things you guys are trying to build, whether or not Operations Hub can sell, help you solve a problem that you have. Uh, if anything comes to mind throughout this, throw it in the Q&A. Um, we'll go through those questions at the tail end here. We'll have plenty of time to do some live workshop for use cases that uh, that you guys have. So please, please, please send them in the Q&A. We'd love to talk about them. We'd love answering your questions uh, and we'll be able to do that uh, at the tail end as well. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So Operations Hub is the newest hub to the HubSpot ecosystem. Um, it's something that we think is a huge game changer. We're really excited about. Um, and I think it's important to sort of define this first. So how Operations Hub fits into your overall sort of HubSpot uh, ecosystem. If you're buying one of the new bundles, usually Operations Hub is included in some of those CRM bundles. If you're an existing HubSpot customer and you're wondering, you know, what can Operations Hub do for me and how can I get value from it? Uh, this is the right place to come. Uh, so what what, what Operations Hub is going to let you do uh, is it helps you connect other tools to HubSpot. It helps you sync and clean some of your existing customer data, and it helps you automate different parts of your business process, especially when those parts maybe are outside of HubSpot or the automation tools in HubSpot are just maybe just slightly not too powerful enough to do this really advanced use case that you're trying to do. Uh, and ultimately the goal is to prevent your operations team and prevent all of your folks from doing busy work, data entry, copy pasting in between systems or sort of powering things outside of the core CRM platform that runs your business and help them automate and get value out of all of those pieces. So let's talk about what uh, Operations Hub can actually help you do. Um, so I'll sort of pass the mic a little bit to Sarah here in terms of what these are and, and areas where as someone who's been in sort of the marketing operations seat, uh, how this helps you in some of the, the role that you've had. Yeah, and Connor, honestly, that definition was so perfect, everything Operations Hub does. I think the biggest thing is that from a marketer, Operations Hub is running in the background, which if you're a marketing ops person, you know that a lot of what you do is running in the background. Um, so Operations Hub will uh, sync with other tools to do continuous bi-directional syncing between, you know, between those properties to make sure they're up to date on a regular basis. Um, and then skipping down to the third bullet, it'll actually help automate that data quality, both in HubSpot and the tool that you're syncing with. Um, and so if you look in our integration directory, you can see our data sync uh, partners where we can actually integrate with a variety of different partners throughout your organization. Um, and then Connor will get into what um, looks different as you look at the different packages, but we can actually also use custom coding to program that automation so that you can really satisfy that really unique use case that's very specific to your business. Um, and really when you start breaking down the time saved um, and both in just like building and enriching your data, but also correcting human error. I mean, Operations Hub is just a game changer. Cool. Uh, something I want to clarify, this is something I asked all the time if we jump to uh, the next slide here is the difference between, uh, I think we missed one in between if we go back package options. Cool. Uh, the differences between uh, the two products. So um, there are two versions of Operations Hub today. Um, there's Starter, which uh, has what used to be PySync all built into it. I'll talk about kind of what that uh, what that means and what you can do with it, but that's going to allow you to connect to other systems like Microsoft Dynamics and Outreach and Zendesk and uh, Pi. What else is in there? There's uh, Pipedrive. There's uh, there's NetSuite. Uh, there's tons and tons of them. More get added all of the time. Uh, it's impossible to keep track. Um, you will find those if you go to the HubSpot app marketplace and you search for any connected system or you look at some of the different uh, powered by HubSpot integrations. All of those are built on top of Operations Hub. And so standard at the free version, so not not even paid with starter. You can do uh, standard fields syncing between those systems that are predefined. And then at the starter tier level, 
you can do custom fields as well. So we're going to give a use case for how Starter can help you do and achieve different goals that you might have as a marketing operations person, even if your CRM isn't HubSpot. So that'll be super fun. We'll go through that in a minute. Uh, and then at the operations hub professional side, um, primarily what you're going to add is that programmable automation and webhooks. So how can you be able to connect to other systems? How can you be able to push and pull data between other systems? And how can you really take some of those operations functions and really extend them with custom code, custom actions, expanding kind of everything that you're able to do within those two tools. So that's the difference between the two tiers. It's something we get asked pretty frequently and I, I want to make sure to define for people. Normally, I usually talk about the programmable automation stuff because that's my favorite thing. Uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit about also how Starter and how you can use that for some of what you guys are working on. Um, so let's jump into an example here um, for what this is. And then uh, I'll sort of kick it to you, Sarah, and you can sort of anecdotally expand on areas that you've seen this. So one of the things that Operations Hub Starter can help you do is you can use the data sync functionality to connect HubSpot to other platforms. So the example that we're going to run through today is connecting HubSpot to Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and this is a live customer use case. This is something we built really recently. Um, this is not a theoretical example. It's very, very real. Uh, and so in this example, we have a customer. Um, they're using another CRM. So they're using Microsoft Dynamics. And one of the challenges that they run into is their sales team lives in Dynamics, their revenue data lives in Dynamics, uh, but the marketing team is all using HubSpot. And so they're trying to figure out how can we manage and connect those systems. And so by using Operations Hub Starter, um, they're able to connect to those two platforms. And so we'll take you guys through exactly how that works. But before we jump to examples, uh, if we go back just one really quickly, uh, is the, the goal here is to be able to connect to those other systems. So I, Sarah, I want to kick it to you. And, and I'm sure you have plenty of examples of situations where you've had data somewhere else that you wanted to use or reference or, or utilize and reporting um, from something that wasn't connected to your core marketing automation solution? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, I think the biggest one, and honestly, this is the example, is when you're trying to look at whether your marketing efforts have fed into meetings and ultimately revenue, um, if you're using a different CRM. Um, and the biggest reason why this matters or has come up is if you're a growing company and you're using different tools and you're trying to almost like rectify data and bring that up to your board and the data doesn't align, um, the confusion, the cost of the confusion in your organization, um, but also the time spent in trying to correct that data is, is ginormous. Um, so Connor, if you want to kind of share that experience, um, I yeah. just think this experience is just so valuable. Cool. Let's go through how we did this. So I think the main thing and, and what we'll sort of show you guys here is how we used uh, Operation Sub to connect to Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, and then ultimately how we got that data back into HubSpot to power uh, ROI reporting, all of the revenue metrics and be able to sort of drive all of those automated nurture paths. So the first step is if you if you search the HubSpot, um, uh, the HubSpot app marketplace, you'll find uh, Microsoft Dynamics in here. Uh, I think 365 may be a typo here, but for Dynamics, so you'll find Dynamics uh, in the HubSpot app marketplace. And then first we're going to select uh, contacts. So uh, Operations Hub today, uh, I believe supports contacts uh, with Dynamics specifically contacts and leads, but to HubSpot contacts and companies um, with sort of deals and other objects uh, actively being worked on by the HubSpot team. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and connect to uh, contacts from uh, HubSpot. So if we jump to the next slide, what that's going to give you, this is a little uh, zoomed out, but ultimately what you're able to do is you can map fields between each of these systems. So you're going to be able to say, I want to sync the contacts inside of Dynamics to my contacts inside a HubSpot. You'll be able to define some of that syncing behavior. So, you know, when do you want something to update its marketing lifecycle stage? How do you want some of those pieces to go and sort of configure the settings specific to your kind of use case? Um, Connor, next, you're going actually, to be able to- create... on Yeah, please. The value Absolutely. Of that real quick? Because if you look at this, it allows you to personalize what properties you're actually going to pull over. And so as you're growing as an operation team, as a revenue operations function, it empowers property you know, ownership across different teams. And I think that's so valuable and something that kind of gets overlooked in a lot of different organizations of what team owns what property. So this customizable integration is just huge. Yeah. And I think the, the specific value of this, right. And I think something that um, we want to touch on here is we, we created a field for the dynamic sync um, in here for the first meeting booked date. So we basically have a field that we've created in HubSpot for first meeting book date. Um, that'll show up in sort of some later slides, but we created a, a field for first meeting book date. And then what we're doing is because we have operation sub starter, we can connect that custom field to another custom field in dynamics. And then we're populating inside of dynamics. If that first meeting booked date has occurred. So whenever, a sales rep books a meeting that is going to be different based off of your your business process but when you configure that rule 
you're going to say, okay, once that first meeting books uh, date is populated, we're going to map that back to uh, HubSpot, and then we're going to sync it back into HubSpot. And so what's going to end up happening inside of HubSpot, if we jump to uh, our next slide here, is when we map that custom field, um, it's going to sync back into HubSpot. So this is just, and I know I saw someone say this slide is blurry. Um, we can share from uh, the knowledge base as well, but this is sort of the, the standard screen flows. We'll get into very specific examples of kind of like what this looks like. So yours will look a little different. Um, as you're going through the configuration. Um, but what we're doing here is we're mapping that first meeting book date back into HubSpot. So what that's going to let us do uh, is if we jump to the next one. So one of the big use cases that we run into that folks want to be able to do is I want to drive nurture sequences for all of the people that I send over to sales to make sure they book a meeting with my sales team. Um, but the difficulty in being able to do that is the sales team doesn't log whether or not they booked that meeting inside of HubSpot because the sales team isn't using HubSpot at all. They're all inside of Microsoft Dynamics. So if we jump to our next slide here, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that first meeting book date. So remember that in Dynamics, we're populating that field whenever someone books a meeting, and then we're using Operations Hub Starter to sync that field back into HubSpot. So what this is going to allow us to do is we can set a nurture up inside of HubSpot, and we can set the goal of our nurture workflow to be whether or not this first meeting booked date is known. Um, what that's going to let us do is a couple things. So if we jump to our next slide here, um, you're going to be able to keep track using the standard workflow performance tab inside of HubSpot. How effective is this workflow at getting people to book those meetings, even though those meetings aren't happening inside of HubSpot at all? And we can pull back and see we've successfully booked meetings with 119 people. That's a 14% conversion rate. And just by having that one field inside of Dynamics syncing back to HubSpot, we can power all of this automation and visibility. The next piece that we're going to run into, uh, and hopefully in the near future, you'll actually have deal sync with Dynamics as well, uh, which will allow you to sort of do this in, in different ways. But one of the things we run into pretty frequently is, um, okay, well, now I'm managing all of my marketing out of HubSpot, but how can I find out what, what the ROI value is on everything that we're doing at HubSpot, whether it's your ad tools, whether it's your workflows, whether it's your campaigns. And so using a similar field, so in this case, we created a Oh, I apologize, a contact field called total sold value, uh, MS Dynamics. And we mapped that to Dynamics using the operations hub configuration tool. And so what we're doing in this workflow is we're saying, does a contact record that is enrolled have a value in this total sold value greater than zero? So inside of Dynamics, we have a rule that's taking any time something is sold, we're updating that value on the contact record and enrolling them into this workflow. And then using standard sort of HubSpot automation functionality, we're then able to create a deal. So here we're using sort of this merge tag of our, our contact total sold value so that all the deals that are getting created will say, sold Dynamics, what's the value of that? deal, and then we're linking it to that contact record. Um, we can also pass additional information. So uh, here you can sort of pass in what is the value of, of those deals? What's sort of the deal name? Uh, what stage do you want that deal to be in? You could pass other fields as well. So if you have additional fields in Dynamics, so we run into situations pretty frequently where people want to know either what SKU they, they bought or which sales rep they worked with or something else that's on a contact field, you'll also be able to copy that into your deal record. And so what this is going to do is create all of those deals inside of HubSpot, which means using your standard sort of deal revenue, if we jump to the next slide, uh, you can use your native deal revenue by source HubSpot report. So this, you're not managing your sales data in HubSpot at all. All you're doing is syncing back a meeting booked field and then a total sold revenue field. And now inside of HubSpot, you can see how many deals did we generate by all of our sources? What's the value of all of our marketing efforts? You can use the attribution and the native ROI reporting inside of HubSpot to get all of this data. Um, and just simply using that sort of $50 uh, custom field sync SKU, you're now able to get all of this information. And so Sarah, I'll pass it to you in terms of that value to you as a marketer without needing IT, without needing custom integrations and sort of being able to access a lot of these pieces. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Well, I hit on a few, but one is understanding the value of your marketing, which you totally mentioned. Um, and the other piece is I can't emphasize enough that, you know, understanding what data lives where, but then being able to pull that information in and then attribute it to the work that you're doing as a marketer. Um, so this is just a game changer. And honestly, this just scratches the surface, which I know you're going to get into the programmable piece in a second um, of what you can do with Operations Hub. Something I want to emphasize uh, for everyone here as well is I know a lot of our operations hub content and some of the things that we as, as hyper-technical folks get really excited about is some of that programmable work. Everything we just went through is fully point-and-click 
You don't need any technical coding ability to do any of this. Um, if you have a login to Dynamics, if you understand field mapping and you can build a simple workflow, this is something you can create. Um, so I think one of the coolest parts that we get excited about for uh, some of the early and, and starter operations sub products is how much it empowers somebody with a non-technical, non-development background to really build uh, sophisticated and robust connections between their systems, which I think is sort of what this is all about. Um, that being said, let's jump into a use case here. Uh, and then for everyone that's in the audience, please submit Q&A. This will be our last sort of pre-baked uh, use case. And um, we'll, if we don't hear anything from you guys, we'll assume all of you know everything. No one has questions. You're all good to go. Um, otherwise, please, please submit them into um, the Q&A. Uh, and we'd love to sort of answer them for everybody as well and, and go through how you could build some of the things that you're working on. Um, so for this one, we're going to talk about how you can leverage custom code inside of HubSpot to connect uh, anything with an API to HubSpot. Um, so jumping to kind of our next slide here, the biggest example, one of the biggest blocks that we find for marketing teams, and this is very uh, popular with SaaS companies, product-driven companies, people with their own uh, in-house software solutions, is one of the biggest obstacles for them is how do they get user activity and how do they get segmentation data from the product they are marketing? So is someone in a free trial? Has somebody converted to a paid user? What plan is someone on? Some of those key data points that you would sort of use in some of your segmentation. And so for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to talk through how you can use coded automation um, to be able to power some of those marketing workflows without needing to build sort of a big bi-directional uh, custom integration. So if we jump to the next slide here, um, in terms of this example, so if you have in your external product, um, what we're going to be able to do is you're going to have a lot of those different data points. And so by using some of those standard HubSpot if-thens, you're going to be able to sort of take, so this example sort of all the way in the left here. So whenever someone signs up for the product, you intake all of that signup information and pass that back into HubSpot. But in your marketing workflows, you can evaluate whether or not somebody has already created a trial. You can ping your API. You can send that, that coded action out to uh, another um, system and you can evaluate whether or not that trial has been created, whether or not that person has created an account. Um, and all you need is basically uh, an endpoint from your internal product team. You don't necessarily need a fully developed uh, external API uh, and you can pull that data in. And the same premise can be used here for checking your ERP system. If you want to evaluate whether or not someone's an active customer or whether or not they paid all of their invoices. And you can use sort of standard if then logic in side of HubSpot to build those types of flows. And so the breadth of what you're able to accomplish inside of HubSpot using some of this if-then automation um, is vast. And then you can expand that with some of the custom coded JavaScript actions as well. Um, so lots and lots of opportunities there to build anything you can imagine. But the biggest example that we would give is if you have a standard sort of HubSpot workflow um, and you have a coded action that pings your uh, systems API and evaluates, hey, is does this person have an active free trial or is their trial expired? Based off of that one response, you can send them down a branch that determines, am I going to drive them to convert? Am I going to drive them to click this button to extend your trial? And you can sort of drive some of those behaviors off of that product data, which usually is very, very siloed. Um, Sarah, I'll, I'll sort of kick it to you if there's any examples from some of your previous life where accessing that product data would have been valuable as a marketer. Yeah, so so we had a freemium product um, where if we had known, and they were completely disconnected with our HubSpot instance. So if we were able to know if they had the freemium instance spinned up, uh, we could have done a separate email workflow for those people. Um, and then taking it a step further, you know, the example that you were giving was a binary yes or no, are they on the product? But I could even see um, if somebody was a little bit more technically like able, almost doing trigger examples of, okay, are they doing the free product and maybe have they set up this instance or have they used this feature? And then pulling that into your HubSpot instance and actually doing uh, trigger email campaigns based on those examples. Um, so really, once you get into this world, the sky's the limit um, in terms of what you can dream up and then what's available with your endpoint. Awesome. Uh, well, we're going to jump to some live questions here. I see a couple of people coming in. If you want your questions answered, use cases answered, please, please, please throw them in the Q&A uh, and we'll touch on uh, each one of them um, as much as we can. Um, so with that, uh, it, we'll jump to some of our Q&A sections. So the first one that I have is from uh, Bill Beeb. I'm hoping I'm, it could be BB. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, which is what are some use cases you may have experienced that we may need to look out for the operations hub cannot do today. Um, so one of the ones that immediately comes to mind and there are other ways to solve this, which I'll speak through, um, is Operations Hub is awesome. Uh, and I'm speaking specific to some of the coded automation here. 
Operations Hub is awesome at triggering when something happens inside of HubSpot and going and updating other systems, pulling data from other systems, or doing anything that can be triggered by a HubSpot workflow. One of the limitations that we've run into is HubSpot today inside of Operations Hub doesn't have a way to receive a webhook from another system. So let's say you're using um, something like a Jira or some other tool, or maybe your internal product and that product is sending out a webhook. Uh, HubSpot doesn't have a way to catch that webhook and then drive actions off of it. So great at if the trigger happens in HubSpot, we can power anything else. If the trigger happens somewhere else, we have to find another way to get that into HubSpot. Um, two ways that we've run into that is one, uh, if you are using any sort of like an ETL or a Zapier or something else, you can grab that from another system and, and push that back in. Additionally, uh, we've seen people, one of the cool, and I've I've talked to the HubSpot product team about this. I think that there's things actively happening about it, but in the CMS Hub Enterprise SKU, uh, there's serverless functions. You can point a webhook uh, at a serverless function, and that's another solution to basically take data from another system, push it into HubSpot, and do things with it without needing to format that data for the HubSpot API, um, which is an option as well. Uh, but that's kind of the limitation that exists right now is anything you can trigger via a workflow uh, the coded action can run off of if you're just trying to intake information uh, that's kind of a, a, a dummy piece of webhook data from another tool. Um, triggering something in HubSpot off of that webhook is something that, that would be a challenge. Um, I have another one here from, from Howard Deskin that I can, I can sort of let maybe Sarah, I can, I can let you give a shot at I can also give my best answer. Uh, neither of us are on the sales team at HubSpot. So take, take whatever our, our answer is here with a grain of salt. Uh, but Howard asked if we are on the marketing pro plan, uh, do we still need ops hub? Um, which maybe I'll, I'll answer as if you want to do things that we talked about in this webinar. Uh, yes. Uh, so if you have marketing pro marketing pro has tons and tons of functionality, it's a great product. Um, if you want to be able to sort of connect to other systems using custom fields, if you want to do programmable automation, uh, you would need operations hub to do that functionality, uh, which is why we sort of touched on that piece of it. Um, I have another one from Arthur Dolan. Arthur, if you want to add some clarification here, I'm happy to speak to it. Um, but your answer was, can starter plan cross related individual sales results? Um, and I'm not sure what that means, but I would be happy to speak to it more uh, if you want to clarify it in either the chat um, or another Q&A answer as well. Uh, from Luis, uh, can you use the workflow example you gave connecting Microsoft with HubSpot with just the starter plan? Um, so the answer is if you have another pro product, so in order to access workflows, uh, you need a pro product, but you do not need operations hub pro, uh, to connect with custom fields, uh, or you only need operations hub starter. And if you're only syncing standard Microsoft dynamics fields, uh, you, you can even use the free version as well. So you do not need the pro operations hub pro to do that piece of it. Uh, but you will need at least one pro product to build workflows because the starter plan obviously doesn't have access to some of those automation features. Um, these are some great questions. These are some good questions. I'm going through. If you have any that you want to jump on, Sarah, I can, I can kick it to you. Yeah, no, honestly, you're doing well. such a great job. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I'll see if I have, I have some of these other ones. So um, there is some of these, I think we answered. Let's see. Oh man, this is one from, from PW. Uh, I will, I will answer this because it's, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, and I will try to boil it down as much as I possibly can for anyone who's uh, not as technical on this call. So the question from BW is, can you provide some detail around the intersection of reverse ETL? Uh, and the, the, the examples that he gave there are things like census and high touch um, and operations hub. And are you able to provide any examples or use cases from your work? Uh, my answer is yes. I'm going to try to define some of these things for other people as well. Um, so we've worked with census and high touch. Um, so ETL products uh, for anybody unfamiliar um, are tools that you can you can purchase that connect different systems. So things like Workado, high touch, census, usually used if you have a data warehouse or if you have sort of other uh, products in your ecosystem and you're trying to pass data in between those tools and sort of build syncing functionality. Um, I would sort of describe Operations Hub as, as a, a, a starter ETL that uh, it will expand and I'm assuredly into doing a lot of these functionalities uh, over time. Um, but where we've seen some different functions, so for your example, PW, um, we for reverse ETL. So we've seen solutions that we've built where 
you take something uh, that you have like a snowflake database that has product data. It has sort of a bunch of different pieces of information that the team has pushed there over time. And then we implement uh, with HubSpot and we use high touch, which is a tool that would allow us to take some of that data inside a snowflake. So things like user last login date, uh, any information around, um, behavioral data, anything you're pushing out to that sort of Snowflake uh, or data warehouse, and then using something like a high touch to push that from Snowflake into HubSpot. Um, one of the things that high touch does really well is it takes data inside your Snowflake database and puts it into uh, your CRM or your marketing automation product. And where we've seen um, something like operations have be really valuable is, is sort of two examples. One is data that happens inside a HubSpot that we want to put into Snowflake. So that could be something like anytime someone fills out a form, we want to go update Snowflake and update the date of last form uh, fill out or sort of any other action. Um, similarly, we've seen things where high touch is set up on sort of a 24 hour cycle or 24 hour schedule. And what we'll do is we'll actually use operations hub to pull data from Snowflake in real time when we need it for a specific workflow. So an example there would be uh, a real example that we have for a customer is um, someone has a free trial nurture and the high touch sync happens every 24 hours. And so if someone comes in, they create an account, they're in a trial experience, we want to check. So we use operations hub to go to Snowflake and find out, did this person convert already? Because we don't want to send them an email that's like, explore all the benefits of a paid, paid account when they've already upgraded. And so that's something that uh, that can use really, really well um, for those pieces. Uh, and what PW Further asked is, if I understand correctly, reverse ETL tools cover some of the capabilities the HubSpot has not yet built, though in time you expect more of these capabilities to be native in Operations Hub. Um, I would answer yes, but I am not on the product team, nor do I decide what, what HubSpot builds. Uh, but I will say that, that the answer is definitely yes. Uh, and I think that you'll see, I, I, uh, I do think that HubSpot in the near future will be able to compete with a lot of these bigger ETL products. And I think Operations Hub is a great way to get exposed to some of that functionality and also have an interface with some of those reverse ETL type applications as well. Uh, if you've read any that are less complicated, Sarah, I'm more than happy to let you take one. I was yeah. answering that and not reading any of these other ones. No, you're so good. That went over my head. There were a couple that snuck into the comments that I'm going, or the chat that I'm going to kind of tackle. So one is, I think it was is it Alicia. Um, said, our use cases to send follow-up emails one hour after meetings and we can't get meeting times of the property to use in a workflow. Can Operations Hub help? So that's a really good question. So because Operations Hub is more about bringing in data from external places and bringing it into HubSpot, I don't know that that would be an Operations Hub feature. Croner, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but I will take that as an action, Alicia, to take a look and see maybe you know what, what would be possible within HubSpot to help you with that use case. Um, Connor, do you have any, any thoughts on that? Uh, I was reading other questions, but if you want to restate oh. the question, I'm happy to answer it. Her question in a nutshell is she's trying to work with meetings in HubSpot and she wants to interact with the meeting time. I, I don't know that that's an operations hub feature. Um, and so I didn't know if you had thoughts on probably, that. Probably. Yeah, probably not. Uh, it's something that um, it's probably something we could help you with. Uh, if, if Actually, um, if we can jump to the next slide, I have my my email on here as well. If there's anything that like we either don't answer to the degree that you want it to uh, or you're curious and talking more about, I would be happy to talk to you or can grab folks from our team. We're happy to talk to you as well. Um, that one in specific, I'd probably need a bunch more information, but I would be happy to, to talk about it more and, and see if it's something that we could, we could solve for. Um, one question I that I saw come in, sorry, go for oh, it, please. Oh, I was going to say, I also saw um, Christine asked, can I use operations hub to sync data between our proprietary software and HubSpot? And probably yes, yes. if you have a new point, and yes. I would talk to Connor uh, about that, but that's exactly yeah, what that yeah, yeah. last example was. Yes, that's exactly what that last example was. The answer is yes. Uh, would be happy to talk more about your specific use case. Um, send me an email, hit me up on LinkedIn, uh, fill out a form on our website. It's appstudate.com. Uh, would be happy to, to talk to you around how you could do that. But the answer is, is definitely. Uh, and that's one of the big use cases that we've been using Operations Hub for as well. Uh, one of the benefits as for anyone to sort of 
uh, on the marketing side for uh, folks as well is that you you don't necessarily need a lot of support from your product team, uh, which is a huge advantage. So one of the things that we see being really popular for people on the marketing ops of the CRM side is that they can build an operations hub coded action um, with some, some JavaScript understanding, and they may need a secret or an endpoint from the product team. But basically, if the product team can send you a response to any kind of a query, um, then you don't need the product team to go build that code. Uh, so you don't need to have them be building an interaction with the, the HubSpot API. They don't need to fit it into a dev sprint. Uh, anyone who sort of tried to, to interact with the product team is they're trying to build features for customers much more than they are trying to give you the data that you need uh, to do more marketing. And so really, really great uh, functionality um, in that regard where um, you can build those types of solutions without necessarily needing an entire product sprint um, to do it, which is super cool. Um, Question from Rodrigo, which is, uh, is there something that can be achieved via Ops Hub that wouldn't be possible to do via the existing HubSpot API? Um, so the answer on that one is Hubs the Operations Hub is going to interface with HubSpot via the API the same way as any external application. So if there's something that is not possible via the API, so one of the ones that's like near and dear to my heart uh, is that there is no uh, create quote uh, API endpoint, um, you would not be able to do that with Operations Hub if it's not possible via API. Uh, but essentially what uh, Operations Hub allows you to do is build whatever code you're trying to build. This is specific to Operations Hub Pro. Build whatever code you're trying to build native in a HubSpot workflow, trigger it using uh, if then and sort of native uh, declarative automation logic and power that. So if the API on HubSpot can't do it, you're, you're not going to get uh, the ability to access the Operations Hub. But the flip side of that coin is if the API can do it, which the HubSpot API can do most things amazingly well, uh, then you can trigger it inside of HubSpot via workflow, which is incredibly, incredibly valuable. I can take another one unless you had one in particular that you had, you had found. No, right, go cool. for it. Uh, like I, no I grabbed problem. a couple, so I'll, go I'll go through it. these. Um, one from Daniel. Good to see you again, Daniel. Uh, I feel like we're best friends. Uh, Coved all of our stuff, which is awesome. So one question was, can you use coded actions to pull data out of HubSpot and send it into Power BI? So for example, to avoid the need for an in-between data warehouse that deserializes the HubSpot data? Uh, the answer is yes. So one of the actions that we see, and that was sort of the one I gave with sort of that Snowflake ETL example, is you could take a coded automation. So anything that would get triggered by HubSpot, so your example of um, form submissions, right? So serialized data, you could essentially, uh, any you could have a workflow that fires any time a form submission runs, and you could have a coded action that goes to uh, your data warehouse or wherever you're storing um, that Power BI table. And it could update that data table and say, date of last form submission, update that field, and then increment number of form submissions. Or it could grab the form submissions value on the contact record and update it there as well. Um, so you could, that, that's a great use case actually, is sort of taking something that's happening in HubSpot and going and updating it in another system um, as well. Uh, I have one asking for a clarification on uh, lack of webhook functionality. So I want to be I want to be specific as well. Hub, the Operations Hub does have webhook functionality, but it's webhooks out, so it's not webhooks in. So inside of Operations Hub, there's no way to receive a webhook. Uh, from another system inside of HubSpot today, uh, which is one of the limitations that I sort of spoke to that we run into. So uh, the anonymous attendee asked for clarifications on uh, sort of the workarounds I was mentioning. So one is um, serverless functions, uh, which exist inside of CMS Hub Enterprise are essentially uh, node Lambda functions that it can be queried inside of HubSpot. They're very cool. They're the things that let you build like full applications on top of CMS Hub. Uh, but one of the ways that we've gotten around that is by adding um, with CMS Hub Enterprise, creating a serverless function that receives a webhook from another system and then powering uh, either external webhooks or fully coded actions via workflows inside of HubSpot, which gives us kind of that like bi-directional uh, syncing action without necessarily building uh, middleware or some other solution. And that's a way that we've gotten around for a couple of different integrations where we don't want to build like a full AWS uh, warehouse or some middle node or something else to manage that integration. We can basically trigger code out of HubSpot somewhere else, intake webhooks from another system into CMS Hub and sort of power all of those pieces. Um, I have had conversations with the product around adding some of that functionality into Operations Hub. Uh, I can't speak to whether or not they're happening, uh, but the I, I do think that we'll see uh, more happening there in, in some of the new future. So his question was, we have a web-based app, which is a talent marketplace, and we're looking at OpsHub as a way to sync data between the two. Um, that's totally something we could we could help you support or sort of answer questions about. Uh, email me, send me a LinkedIn message. Um, would be happy to to touch more on on that particular use case. 
Um, let's see. Okay, I think I've gone through most of the Q&A and I can start scrolling through chat questions. I, I can look through those. If there's one you want to jump on, Sarah, in the interim, feel free. Honestly, Otherwise, I I'll think, read through some of these. I think they're they're really good. But while you're reading, um, I'll, yeah. I'll speak to maybe the more non-technical people that are <laughs> maybe in the audience. Some of this might be one over their head. Um, if you're a like marketer ops person that's like, I don't know what all these these mean, um, that's okay because I was a marketing ops person that didn't work quite in that degree. I was more in the applications of what it means for a marketer. Um, so I would just think that with Operations Hub, sometimes the challenge is how much can you dream? And then thinking, how can I save money with the business? I think it's like, you can technically do all these things, um, but think about what your business goals, think about where your disjointed data lives, um, and then start a conversation with HubSpot or with Connor um, about, okay, how can we tackle this and basically find money for the business? Because at the end of the day, that's what this is. We're finding money for the business because we're saving your time and we're preventing human error. Um, so Connor, hopefully I bought you a little bit of time to find other You questions. did, you did. I also agreed. <laughs> I agree with everything you said. Uh, Alicia asked a question. You, this may have been the one that I, I spoke to earlier and maybe didn't read, or maybe she had a clarification. Um, uh, but she, her question was, our use case is to send follow-up emails one hour after meetings, but we can't get the meeting time as a property to use in a workflow. Can operations hub help? Yes. Uh, it can. Uh, so I have a couple of ways that I can think of to do that. You would want to use a coded automation, um, to do that one is when you could take a contact workflow and you have uh, the sort of date of last meeting booked property uh, is known or date of last me meeting booked property is today. Uh, and you could, however you want to trigger your workflow, right? But you can't grab that, that time property. And what you can do is you can use Operations Hub to go hit uh, either, you would hit the engagements API inside of HubSpot. So this would be a JavaScript uh, code. You would hit the engagements API inside of HubSpot you would pull uh, the meetings uh, record. So you'd probably just grab whatever the most me recent meeting is. And then you would grab what is the time uh, that that meeting has occurred. And you could either in that JavaScript action, uh, maybe schedule the next email to go out and, and sort of do something to that effect. But I think what might be easier is to have update a contact property uh, that does have a date time value and then uh, trigger an email off of that contact property uh, potentially. Uh, but but this sounds doable for sure. Um, it's sort of one, one piece of lightweight JavaScript to hit the engagements API. And a really honestly, a great example of where some of the standard out of the box HubSpot workflow functionality is incredibly powerful but there might be that one little thing you're trying to grab, which is like that, that meeting, uh, meeting time. And if that meeting time is available in the API, you can grab it using the coded action and you can trigger actions off of it. Um, and really, really great example of where operations hub can, can help you achieve things that, um, standard out of the box HubSpot you wouldn't be able to do. That's a great example. Cause I know time-based enrollments and workflows can be tricky sometimes. So I'm really glad that that example came up. Yeah, that's a really, really good one as well. Um, let's see the, oh, someone, she just said, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, if that's something we can help you with, shoot us a note. We'd love to help. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I answered Rodrigo's question around existing API, uh, and custom properties versus, um, things operations hub can do API cannot, uh, operations hub is a way to build code inside of HubSpot. So if the API can't support it at all, um, you're kind of stuck there a little bit as well, but there's some other things. Daniel posted a super helpful article, uh, by, I, that I should click on it and validate that this is true. Uh, I don't see the author. I think that it's Jack, uh, who we did some webinars with as well, but a uh, really great resource from Daniel as well. Really cool examples of, of things that you can build, um, inside of HubSpot as well, uh, for some of those, those different use cases, if there's ones that people are interested in. Um, Oh, I have one in here I haven't spoken to, which I'll try to answer. I don't know if I have enough information to, but I'll, I'll give it my best, uh, which is from Chris Nalt, which is how do you leverage Operations Hub as a solution for API integration before it is actually tested? So it is actually tested equals tested for two connection points. Um, the way that we typically do this is with uh, creating a developer org. Um, so we will create a, a HubSpot developer account. We'll build that coded automation inside of that developer account. Um, if we're only reading data, uh, we can connect that via you know coded action up to 
a production uh, external environment. Um, if we're writing data, then you probably need sort of a sandbox or an additional development account on the other side. Um, but that's how we do some of this testing uh, to make sure that everything's sort of working uh, correctly prior to sort of you going live with it. Um, like any sort of live real coding, um, you, you want to make sure that everything is tested before you necessarily do everything directly in your, in your production environment. Um, and there's sort of more that you'll be able to do uh, on that side as well. So I see Sid's question here, um, and I think I understand it right. So Sid says, I'm a realtor. I just signed up on HubSpot yesterday. Um, congratulations. Welcome to the HubSpot community. It's amazing. Um, and is there any action planner feature where we can get on HubSpot to create a plan for prospects or potential clients? So if I'm reading your question correctly, it sounds like you want to create a plan to engage with your uh, prospects and clients which if I'm reading it correctly, it actually sounds like you might be a great candidate for um, Sales Hub. Um, Connor, are you reading that the same way I am? Maybe, uh, I, I think there's, there's, two, there's two directions here. So one is like, how do we do a, there's two ways I could see, I could see this getting answered uh, and I'll answer it for both mm -hmm. things. I think one is what you said, right? Which is Sales Hub and for an internal plan. So using things like playbooks or using things like sort of custom field properties or required fields on deals to be able to see, are we completing all the actions we need to complete? And I think Sales Hub is a great use case for that. Another one that's maybe similar and not operations hub driven, but we've seen other customers use. So we have a customer who does a lot of um, kind of like a, a, a training type of use case. So when they sell a product to a customer, that customer has to complete required sort of training and certification against that product. Um, and we built them some really cool things on CMS hub uh, using memberships where someone can log in, they can sort of see uh, which items have I completed, have a checklist and an eval to be able to sort of complete that. And that writes back into HubSpot on contact properties. And so you could run a report for who are all my people that I sold things to and have completed actions, you know, one, two, three, but not completed four and five. Um, and you could build sort of a user facing type of experience using um, CMS hub for that. Uh, that may be bigger than, than the breadth of what you're trying to accomplish, but uh, that's where I could see it going sort of either way. If it's a, if it's a customer driven action, um, CMS hub is, we're going to do a whole bunch more in CMS hub. It's we're as excited about some of the new CMS hub stuff as we were operations hub, but um, being able to create kind of that user experience externally, but so that the things that those users take on your site um, actually writes back into the core CRM platform, which is super cool as well. So I could see that honestly working uh, either way um, for those ones, but I think sales hub or CMS hub are probably both great use cases. Um, we're happy to talk about that further or also for um, if uh, to your HubSpot rep, I'm sure they would love to chat with you as, as well and see if it's something that uh, they could help support. And Sid, since I know you're new to HubSpot, um, checking out the HubSpot user community may be a great option too. Um, you may be able to connect with some other realtors that have tackled similar use cases. Um, just since you're new to the community, it's kind of good to know what else is out there and who else you can connect with. Cool. I think that that is the majority of our questions. Uh, so we'll we'll go ahead and, and wrap. Um, thank you everyone who came, asked questions. Uh, we'll do a whole series of these. If you liked this one, uh, we have more coming up. Jan, I, I don't know which ones are coming up. If you want to to give the highlights, I, I can defer to you and let you do that. But we do have more of these coming up for uh, sales profiles and other pro sales ops profiles, other folks in your org and how they can leverage and use uh, Automation Hub as well. Jan just put the link in the chat uh, for uh, secret weapon to scaling sales operations. So that's the next one that we're going to do. Uh, please come attend, uh, ask questions on those ones as well. Um, and if there's anything that we didn't touch on, if there's use cases that you want support on, feel free to email me. Uh, I love talking all things operations. Hub. Uh, and I'm sure Sarah, we would love to hear from you as well. Um, and thank you all so much for coming. Thank you so much.